All right, so Mimi has worked in the College of Engineering and External Relations for eight years. She began her career working for Novel, a local software company, and transitioned to being a homemaker for many years while she did contract work as an editor slash writer, organizer, and then helped with a family business. Mimi has a bachelor's degree in communications from BYU. As an Air Force brat, Mimi moved a lot and was able to meet many new people, which ignited her interest in their stories, what makes them tick, how they succeed, their hardships. 2020, Mimi became a life coach and was able to turn her love of people into an ongoing opportunity to teach others how to change the results of their lives. She helps people achieve their goals, overcome challenges, and make more to changes. Here she enjoys coaching in our business, relationships, health, and goals. Mimi has three daughters and two boys, aged 17 to 29. She enjoys working in the yard, growing a garden, and doing home improvement projects. He is a bit of a bike hoarder and takes great pride in riding a vintage twin tandem that weighs roughly 5,000 pounds. <laughs> For Mimi. I'm so excited to be here. And it makes me, it reminds me of this experience I had a couple of years ago. Um, I we had a visitor coming. It was the grandson of Elder Anderson. So I was kind of the person there. I wouldn't have normally been the top dog in that moment of tour of our building. So I worked in engineering. And um, so this grandson was coming with his dad and they came over and it was a Friday. So it was kind of casual and whatnot. And I come out and it's like, oh no, there's Elder Anderson and there's um, somebody. From, I mean, it was just like all these people. And so I was like, oh, we're so glad you're here, blah, blah, blah. And then I take him on this little tour and I went down to the bottom of the stairs and I had this like, all of a sudden my lip was like, <laughs> like I was just like freaking out and thinking, I can't give a tour to these people. I don't even, I wasn't even like skilled in the tour of our new engineering building. And so I was like at the bottom and I was like, stop it right now. Like I had to stop my lip. I had to. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I feel a little today because I've never been taught in this environment before, but I'm totally excited to be here. And I hope that some of the things I've learned and been able to uh, come across in my life will hopefully benefit you so that you can start to live your very best life. And um, just as you were looking, just kind of in, in curiosity here, as you were looking at this class, I just wonder if you can just share, like, what were you thinking when you read that? Like, what came up for you? What was the reason for coming? And I know some of you are here because you are purely supporting me and thank you very much. <laughs> the rest of you or even those people, like it, was there anything that kind of spoke to you when you read that? Anyone? Yeah, and we're among friends. So we just want to share and feel the love. I thought your description was very compelling and it just made me want to find out what can I do to make my life amazing, more amazing. <laughs> Great, awesome. Anybody else? I just feel like I go through life just reacting to everything and I'm not literally like planning my life or like the way that yeah but you know I mean I do a lot of good things then yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally I mean and that's kind of who we are we get in these the ruts sort of or just where we end up we're in the mall in whatever the store is and we wonder why we're staying there forever like that our life is the mall and all of a sudden we're in Claire's it's like we came in to buy earrings and we're never leaving and it's just comfortable so yeah that totally happens anybody else had a reason yeah it's another tool in my tool belt there's just no more techniques to try to yeah. myself yeah good anyone else I wanted to better understand what this life is yeah and and just like spoiler alert that's your choice, what your best life is. And it's just deciding where you want to up your game, where you want to change, where you want to um, improve and where you think I'm willing to be a little bit uncomfortable, maybe. Um, so, okay, I'm just gonna have to refer to my notes a little so I can keep us moving along. Um, so some of the things I thought about that um, or like, are you living in a box that you've just been eating yourself in because it's totally comfortable and that box feels good? Are you um, maybe looking at that and thinking, you know, I don't want to lead a mediocre life. Maybe I'm in a mediocre place right now and I can up that. And maybe that's in one area or maybe that's in multiple areas or you just have to kind of decide. Um, maybe you were just curious to see what wakening up means. Like, what does that mean to waken up your life? 
So kind of other things I've thought about, like um, in this, sometimes kind of like the mall example, we start just sleepwalking. We go along our lives and we're just sleeping through it. And we're just doing the things and we're, as you said, kind of reacting to things or we're just on this auto show ourselves. We just keep doing the same things because it's easy. We get up and we do this thing. And then there's just a point where you have to look and say, is this still serving me? Do I like what I'm getting. Um, or sometimes we're pleasing other people. We're just in a place where it's like, well, that makes them happy. And we forget that we might be part of the formula. Um, uh, you know, maybe some of you have done like the mom or dad thing and you've forgotten to take care of yourself. Like you were just in that role always. Just that's the role I'm in. I take care of my kids. I do the carpool. I do the, you know, I go to work. I did it. And like, where are you in that process? Are you helping them up level? Like I go to my son's soccer games and I try, I'm like, like, I know you mom, you're not even watching, but I try to walk around the field. Cause I'm like, you guys I'm running around and the rest of us are all mid-age sitting here, you know? And it's just like, we just get in the process of maybe helping others instead of looking at like, how do we want to up-level in our own lives? Maybe um, you're doing the casual help thing. You're not taking care of yourself in the way you really want to, or maybe you're in a job that's not really pushing you, or maybe you're, um, I don't know, in a relationship that's just not working. I mean, that could be with friend that you've had that you're just like, you know, this isn't, I need to be around people who bring me up more. Maybe this isn't my life. So just be thinking about some of those things. Um, and while you're you know, thinking about why you might have come here, I want you to think about maybe that one thing. There might be many, but just be thinking about that one thing that's keeping you from living your best life right now. And it could be one thing that's like a bottleneck to lots of things, or it could be just one thing that you like, it's kind of top of mind right now that you want to change. It can be anything. So let me, I'm not very versed in how this, this goes. Okay, this is probably the next slide that I needed to get to sooner, but since I'm going to go, where do I do this? How do I do this? <laughs> What's <laughs> it? Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that should have probably been now. No, that probably should have been earlier in my, my game. Um, so yeah, be thinking. It could be lots of things. It could be one thing. It could be a bottleneck um, in all kinds of places. So uh, what I want to, hold on, everybody, hold on, hold the phones. Um, okay. So but I, while you're thinking about that thing, whatever it is, and hopefully it comes top of mind easily. Hopefully it just kind of surfaces, like it, it, whatever it is, hopefully it surfaces for you. And I think it will, you just let it come, okay, whatever it is. Um, and so now what I wanna do is kind of show you, teach you, we didn't have a whiteboard in here. So I'm gonna teach you this basically. We're gonna talk about thoughts. So everything in your life that you have right now currently is a result of a thought that you were thinking at some point, whatever it is. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how this actually works. But like, you may have as many as 60,000 thoughts. It's been said, you may have up to 60,000 thoughts in a day that just come at you randomly. So a lot of times we just get at the affect of our thoughts. We don't ever question them. We just let them come. Oh, I can't do that. Or, oh my gosh, that would be terrible. Or, that would be too hard or whatever. We just let them come, whatever it is, then we won't necessarily choose intentionally how we want to think about it. So just notice that in your life, like where thoughts are coming up that may not be serving you. So um, thoughts in this case, let's see if I can be, okay, here we go. So when you have a thought, this is your thought, okay, I'm going to call it, going to call it a T, but I'm going to call it a thought. So that thought is about whatever you've got going on in your life, okay? And it will create always a feeling. So when you have a thought, from that thought, you get a feeling. So if my thought is that feels really hard, something like maybe it's climbing up that mountain, my feeling is gonna be dread on that, on up the mountain. So it's gonna create in me then an action or maybe an inaction. So the action, if I feel dread, might be 
I don't go and hike up the mountain. It might be that I um, lay going up the mountain because it just feels too hard. It might be that I, um, I don't know, I get someone to push me up the mountain. You know, just anything that kind of follows that. So, so this is the pattern. And then I was out of whiteboards. From that, you get your result. Okay. So like I said, all your results come out of a thought that you're thinking. So, so your thought creates your feeling, creates your action or your inaction, and then that creates your result. Um, okay. So am I smart enough to do this now? Okay, so to create the best life possible for you or your best maybe thing that we're talking about here, and I'm just going to just kind of share if you're comfortable, if something came top of mind for you that you think, you know, that's something, it could be whatever. And I'll, I'll show you some examples first. Just be thinking about that. Um, so you're going to choose a thought that will drive you. Then that thought's going to create that feeling that will drive you. And this is all negotiable now. And that feeling would create that action or maybe an inaction. In some cases, maybe it's not eating the chocolate cake or whatever. And then that action will create the result. So, okay, this is one of my favorite movies. Does anybody know this last holiday? Please tell me you do. Okay, those of you who don't, it's about a woman who um, it's Queen Latifah. And she is working in a department store and she does this food sampling and she's kind of, she loves the food sampling and she's, darling and she's living a very conservative life and it's all very good well anyway she falls and bumps her head and someone can help me with the story it I love the movie but I don't remember much of anything and she so here she is kind of in the samples and then here she is showing it's all the old people they all come and they're adorable and then there's this boy she likes but she's living very small and just like I can't you know do anything about it she's she's got this diagnosis that comes up and it's um she's got some brain something someone will know what it is but she's going to die so she has this short life so here she is she's like why lord why me she's singing you know in this choir at church like oh you know now and so so i just want to show you how this works this thought feeling and action so she has you know this life she's living she's very concerned doesn't make a lot of money but she's careful and um shoot i took off one of the slides but she has this book of possibilities at home it, she's kind of just been keeping because it's a little scrapbook and it's this or this or this. So anyway, she gets this diagnosis at work from the work doctor who is just, you know, they have this, this MRI machine and it is the wrong diagnosis. But anyway, she gets this diagnosis that she's going to die. So what happens is her thought about her life totally changes. And it was sort of like life and she was living in this quiet way. But all of a sudden, she has a new thought about her life, which is, I'm going to die. And so she kind of has this feeling from that, like, I don't care. Like, I'm pretty much carefree. And so she goes off and takes action on this. She has this thought, and then she has this feeling, and she takes action on that. Like, who cares? She takes all her money out of the bank, and she gets on a plane and heads to Europe so she can be with his name. What's his name? The, the big um, Who is it? Chef Didier. <laughs> seen this movie can you please <laughs> are you the only one <laughs> you told me much of it. <laughs> oh my gosh it's the best i seriously have to watch it. it's like anybody who becomes part of my family you become the friends like you have to watch this movie so anyway so here she goes and she has this new thought about her life so off she goes to to europe to you know um chef didier and she is there blowing her money, just blowing it like I could care less. She's going down the mountain skiing. She's jumping off of this uh, cliff kind of, I don't know what's that. Bungee jumping. Yeah, bungee jumping. I mean, she's just doing, look at her. She's glamorous. She's dressed. She's like, make me national. You know, and they dress her and she's just gorgeous. Um, she's getting, what did I do? I did something. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I can't be hired for Another 10 minutes to That's okay. <laughs> so anyway, it's just so fascinating to see how she comes from this thought. And that's perfect. I can try it. I won't touch any other button. <laughs> Thank you. So she goes to this um 
new place. Oops, we're gonna hang out for one. And she becomes this, you know, she just changes her whole life, just literally based on this thought that it's like, well, who cares? And so I just want you, as you're thinking about your thing, be thinking about what your thoughts are around that thing right now and how it's driving you or not driving you. And it's something that's going to up-level you, up your game all the way around. Uh, oh, okay. So here's another. This is this is something that I kind of had going on. So I had this beautiful pink kitchen for all years of my life. Isn't it lovely? Everyone wants one. And I had one for more years than I cared to have had that. <laughs> so I had this thought about my kitchen, like, first of all, this has to change. Like, I can't can't do this. Um, but then it was like, holy crumb, I don't know how to do this. And so I had been through a divorce, which is in the last couple of years, year-ish. And um, I was like, oh my cred, I just, my kitchen's got to upgrade. But it was like, I don't have the manpower anymore. And I am not going to spend the money on quartz or granite right now. So I'm just going to do this whole thing. So I did this, um, I can't think what it's called. It's for it. Anyway, I had to take out the old counter. I had to build a new counter. I had to drill holes. I had to do over and over torturous, miserable things. And I had to change my thinking because it was so hard. Like my first thought is like, I can't do this. And then I got to these new thoughts, which were like, I am capable of learning. I can do this. I will learn how to use tools. I will learn how to um, do whatever I have to do. And like, literally there were times I'm sitting on the couch just thinking, oh, I have to go to the kitchen. Like we were eating, oh, I can't even tell you. It was like no kitchen for way too long. And that's just because I didn't like hone in and get after it. But it's like, my thoughts were the drivers. So, you know, as I began to change my thoughts around it, I started to be able to realize, I mean, I want you to know, look, I have a captive audience. I cut that flipping hole there. I drilled a hole there for the... Thing. I painted those lines on this thing and did it 800 times. So like part of this, and I'm going to say it again later, is like being willing to fail. There was pure failure in this process. I, I painted that countertop. I can't tell you how many times because I wanted it to look a certain way. Um, I had to use this stuff. I don't know. You mix it and it becomes cement and it's utter torture. And then if you do it wrong, you have to sand it. So I had to use that and then sand it down and then use it and sand it down because I kept doing it over and over long. There's still mistakes on that, but I just kind of look at it like this, that was pretty good. So more of the torture, I did a backsplash that I painted and you can see the countertop, it kind of turned out cute in the end. Um, but again, I had to just keep learning. I watched promise, at least 5,000 videos. Um, okay, now we're gonna look up this, dude, that was fun. Now we're gonna leave this. So as you're thinking about your thing, no, you might have to learn something new that you've never, ever done before. You might have to believe something different. You might have to meet a different person. You might have to expand your network. You might have to um, buy a new something. I don't know. I got new tools out of the deal, I guess. Um, so this is my final product. And it kind of made me happy in the end. Like it actually still makes me happy because I did that. <laughs> Not very <laughs> so, so anyway, be thinking of that, like all the things that you have to do to kind of get there. So this is, I love, 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 love this scripture. And small and simple things are great things brought to pass. And small means in many instances, instances that confound the wise. To me, small and simple things are how you think about your life. That small thought that becomes bigger, bigger, and then turns into that feeling and then turns into that action and then create that result. Um, you see it all the time. People who are super successful, some of the things they have, you know, they didn't, their thought wasn't, I can't do this, but that's too hard. Or um, my family just doesn't do that. Or, well, we always, whatever it is, they have a thought and it encouraged their next step as they went along. So, okay. Hold on, I better make sure I'm coming along for the ride with my notes here. Okay. So just notice, like for me in my process, I thought uh, I can do this. So that created a feeling of empowerment, sort of um, interest for me. And usually if 
think about this process that I'm teaching you. It's like a one sentence. So we keep it really simple. One sentence that will drive your one feeling, a feeling. And I'm going to give you some to kind of borrow from and tell you not with your own. And then that creates the action. So I had that thought, I can do this. And then that sort of commitment, maybe my feeling like I was committed. And then my action came in, oh, watching videos, learning. I mean, I did have a moment. I called my son-in-law. It was a Friday night, I remember. And Oh, you know, I was just like, I need help. And I drove right over and cut a few things and did some man hefting. It was awesome. And um, and then that will create your result. So my result was my vision. So that think about it. Thoughts, they create your results. Okay. So now if you have paper or your um, phone or wherever you want to do it, if you'd like to write down what that thing is that's coming to you top of mind. It can be spiritual, financial, lifestyle, health, family outcomes, a relationship, a goal. It can be anything. It could be being on time. It could be, I can't stand that every time I come into my garage, there's 14 piles of things that I have to return to someone. I was talking to a woman who, while you're thinking about this, who was telling me about this cable box that she had been, it had been in her return pile forever. She had it like on a table and she said, we were just laughing about it. She's like, I need to just take it back. I just need to take it back. It was costing her on top of it, just sitting there. And like, it's kind of like paper cuts, you know, they hurt and they just, they nibble you to death like a duck. I mean, it's that kind of thing that happens to us when we just don't get the dumb thing done. And so she was like, also saying, and it was costing her $10 a month to have not returned it on top of it being there. It's like, so just what are those little paper cuts in your life? What are those things, you know, that you can um, change or that thing? In this case, we're just going to stay really focused on that one thing. That we can do. So does that, you guys feel like you've got, anybody need a little more time? You know, that thing that's coming top of mind. I mean, it could be literally anything. That you know, it's just, it's going to be right there. Yep. But that thing is, okay. Okay. So now regarding that thing. Whatever it is, I want you to choose a sentence, one sentence in your brain that you can take from this list or your own. And if you have your own, please, I would love for you to share. Like these are not, it, this is a, an exhaustive opportunity to get a sentence that you love. I'm super good at problem solving. Hey, you know, I came up with this thing when I was doing my kitchen. I called it Ifio. It was I'll figure it out. And I'm telling you, I had to figure it out over and over and over. I could one thing done and then it was like, oh, I have to get another thing. Oh, I have to, how am I going to get that into my house? Because I don't even have a truck and I'm going to do it. Just the things. So um, I can figure things out. I am smart. Boy, that'll, that'll push you right along. I'm a good learner. You have an extraordinary future ahead of you. Like if I say that to myself, hey, you have an extraordinary future. You can apply that to this thing. Um, I really want this. Be thinking what it is. Does anybody have any different ones? Please do here. Anyone? Yes. I have plenty of time. Yes. You see what the reverse of that is? I have no time. If I have no time, my feeling is um, limited or it's uh, scarce. Same with money. I have plenty of money. Um, you know, because ten dollars to one person is plenty. Dollars to another person is like, oh, no. so it's how you need to look at. And we have another piece of this, but I'm not going to talk about it because we don't have enough time. But which is like just the fact thing. I have a blue pen. Some of them might say, I hate blue pens. And some might say, I love blue pens. They say, blue pens always write late or whatever it is. So I have the time as an awesome one. Anybody else? Come on, kids. Yes. You can make a new habit. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's a great one. And sometimes we think we can't. Oh, I'm too old. Or, you know, even that. I'm too old. People my age don't do that. Or whatever it is. Anybody else? Anyone? Yes. I forget. I can't do forget. But so it's, it's not necessarily a positive statement, but like, I, I can't do that thing yet, but I'm going to keep doing it. Yes. 
Yes, and that's like just being willing to fail, like be willing to put yourself in harm's way a little bit. And that's kind of what all this is about. It's like getting out of that comfortable place that feels yummy, um, and that feels cozy, that feels, you know, it's like the awakening concept. Well, getting out of bed feels you know, if you're in a nice warm bed and it's cold outside and you have a cold foot, it's not super comfortable, but you are going to be awake. And that means you're going to be doing something versus lying in a bed, staying warm and comfortable. So, yes. My best is good enough. Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. Because your best is doing it. Like I always say to people, when, if you um, quit doing the thing, that's the only time you've failed. You've never failed when you're just still fine and you're doing my best or whatever it is that's still continuing that's not failure ever anybody else that one yes switch this and say she needs me say it again she needs me yes I put that up there instead Absolutely. Of that. whatever thought you have regarding that thing that will drive you it just needs to be a driver thought so now with that thought hopefully you all kind of have one either you know in your mind or paper or whatever then what, as we talked about here, this feeling is we're going to now fuel, fuel the next thing is, what's the feeling? And your thoughts should match your feeling. So if I say something like, um, I can do hard things, if my feeling is um, complacent, that's not going to match me up. I'm not going to get any fuel out of complacent. Um, but if I say I can do hard things, then I might say dedicated or courageous. And these words that I'm giving you, these are fuel words. And I will send out a, I'll send out some after this, like a bunch of emotional options that you are welcome to, you know, attach to whatever you're. Anybody have a different emotion that they think would drive them in a certain situation? Yes. 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 Absolutely. You do if your, uh, your feeling doesn't. Up. Like, in other words, if I wanted to say I can do hard things yeah. and then I don't feel like I can, what do I do to change? Yes, we do that. That is hard. And that's a really good question. And so we need like two more classes to kind of get to that point. But no, that's okay. Because you still are going to be able to go away with, you're going to start to work towards that thought. So you take that initial thought, it may feel completely unbelievable right now. But the other thought that you might choose is not helping you either way. So the, the point is that you get to pick a thought that could actually drive you versus the other one, they're, they're just thoughts. So we still just have the pen. It's just a thought about the pen. And so trying to, if you're saying I can do hard things, you haven't believed that yet. Is that what you're saying? Right. Like you don't quite yet believe it. So you're working and you're slowly getting closer. And that's the muscle of the whole thing. So if I did feel like I can't do something, I can't do this, then what would I change there to make me more likely to be optimistic or hopeful? So start to look at why can't you? Why are you choosing that? Like, what is it that's making yeah. you? Is it your past? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this didn't work before. So. Right. So, I mean, that's part of the whole thing. You kind of have to question, like, have you been, you know, basing, you know, what have you been basing it on? Like a failed past doesn't mean a failed future. It just means you didn't pass. But just know that that's a muscle. It's incremental. And it is part of that small thing, like that little thought, you get to grow it. And if that's too big, go oh, pick that thought. I can do hard things. Pick one that feels like, you know, it's a jump for me, but I can do it. Yeah. Or it can be like that, like a two-part or like, I hadn't done it before, but now I will, or now I can, yeah. then I can be. I'm learning how to do hard things. That is probably reasonable for most of us. Like, you know, when we don't do hard things and we look at like, oh, I can do hard things. Like, well, that's a big fat lie because you can't. I don't, uh, you know, we just got in that mode and then we start to beat ourselves to death. But when we start to look at, like, take one that you can stretch with, but you can actually touch and feel like, uh huh, I can. Does that help a little bit? Anybody else have a question about that? Anybody else have a different um, emotion that they might? Or would drive them in a way, would help them get to that action place. Yeah. I said trusting, not quite optimistic. Back on my past. 
things have worked out. It's not the best thing that that will happen again, but I wouldn't be myself optimistic. Right. So it's kind of pessimistic, but like yes. trust in with extras, thing with like bylaws within the trust. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Anybody else? Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Okay. Good. So that might be after you complete it. So what's your hiring satisfaction? Okay. What's your thought? That precedes this emotion. Just the idea that well, once I do this, I'll be satisfied because I've accomplished the goal. Of yes, yes. So um, I think satisfied is perfect, like knowing that's coming. But that might even be your thought if you think about it. Like I will be so satisfied, and then whatever drives you to the action. So you need to think of an emotion. Satisfied might not drive you to the action. So think what gets you there, if that makes sense. Yes. I was just thinking from a spiritual level here that we have a we have a heavenly father who loves me and he wants to give us absolutely and and that is a perfect thought like and he's on my team and he's gonna he does I mean that's the thing the other part of this it's like holy cow he didn't I mean we have agency like this is the beautiful part like about this class being here knowing oh I'm willing to put myself in pain or whatever that thing is, that's our agency working for us instead of against us. So just remember that, like, I love that idea of agency and then I kind of hate it because I have a 17 year old. It's sort of like a bad, bad movie. But um, <laughs> anyway, okay. So this, this kind of gives you an example of this when you put those into place. I feel motivated. I'm feeling motivated. I'm going to do something when I'm motivated. I feel committed. I'll stick with something if I'm committed. So like my kitchen, I had to be committed. And that meant I stuck with it, even though it was utter torture. If I feel capable, then I'll believe I can. So um, if I feel fearful, then I'll retreat. And we do that all the time. Like when we put fear in as our, because maybe we took the thought that is fearful. Like there's no way I could do that. Like I could not, I had to kind of teach this class. I had to kind of go through a little bit of that. Too. Like, huh. What am I going to be willing to feel? Oh, I'm going to be willing to feel like fail. You know, I'm willing to feel uncomfortable, maybe embarrassed, maybe um, whatever it is. Like you're going to have to put yourself in some new feelings as well. I feel insecure. I mean, maybe I'll be hesitant about something. So just notice that those feelings will create those actions as well as those inactions like all of these. So, okay. Um, so this is the deal. This is not going to be easy, whatever it is. And actually, I'm just wondering, yeah, hold on, let me see what I have here. Um, okay. Does anybody want to share what their thing is? I mean, we're among friends here. We will all sign an NDA at the door where we will not disclose anything that was talked about. Anyone? Okay. Yes. I feel like I'm addicted to carbs. Okay. Um, I mean, the energy and brain clarity and uh, everything else. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, okay. So, so that's your thought. Right. And so, so that action means I'm going to go have more chocolate and pasta and bread. Yeah. And all okay. that thing. But do you kind of see how that works? Because we're all kind of love code. So you're like among really good friends here. Um, so um, do you have like that thing that we talked about, that thing that comes top of mind, like, that's your thought, but what's the result you're wanting to create? Like today, we talk about what's the part that you want to awaken in? Is it that you never want to eat carbs again? Or is it that you want to change the carb addiction? Or what is it? Yeah, I think I would like to be in control of what I choose to fuel my body with. And I want to have deep mental clarity. Perfect. Okay. So thank you. Um, about those thoughts and what kind of thought would drive that. And it's not addicted to carbs, as you said. Um, it might be, I'm learning how to choose good food. I'm becoming better choosing less carbs. If that helps. So does anybody else have a thing that they wanna share that they're thinking that's kind of come top of mind today that they're thinking? This is what I'm wanting to up level. It could be a room you want to fix. It could be those, like I said, the things in the garage that you're like, holy crud, they're sitting there forever. I have to take them back. 
the, the people. Anybody? Yes. Well, I've been trying to get the cluttered out of like everybody to have their own dedicated space in my house. Yeah. And I have little ones that are new additions to my house. And so I, I really want to transform my environment equaling my home. Yeah. So it's, that's a huge one. I have to probably chunk that down into little pieces yeah. because you can't just, that's overwhelming. You probably need to never do anything. Well, and that's part of this process too. It, it is about like, what are the actions that you will need to take to do that thing and create that result. So anybody else? Somebody else had a hand there. We'll go to Lisa. Um, I think one of the things that I thought of is just that I want to eliminate stress from my life. When you were talking about the things in the garage that you just keep on putting on, like I was just talking about just getting these clutter and things like that. Someone once pointed out to me that that unmade decisions cause the most stress. And I just apply that to all those things that cause me stress or because I have not made a decision. When just go return the dang thing in the garage, <laughs> just um, set a time to go through your closets and this and that, you know, make a decision about what this party is going to look like, what this event's going to look like. And, and so I, does that make sense? Yeah, oh, totally. It's like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going back to the, you know, they say nibble to death, uh, a duck nibbles you yeah. to death mm -hmm. or the paper cuts. Like you're just, they are just so painful. Like you have this, I, even in the winter, my fingers split, you know, it's that same thing. It's like, it does just, it eats at your emotional energy. And so part of that is, learning and we're going to talk about that in a second and we're not going to have a lot more time so you're going to have to hopefully solve your lives in the next six minutes <laughs> um, just, just knowing that it is going to be easier not to do the thing by far sleeping's easier being awake is not for wimpy or faint of heart the cold heart for we talked about this a little bit earlier um it's worse than being warm in your bed sleepwalking doesn't require your growth um, so things will come up towards you. So this is what I want to teach you really quickly. Okay, there's this thing called the motivational triad. It is basically what we do. We want to binge watch Netflix, okay, versus do the thing. So the motivational triad is what we do as humans. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain, and we conserve energy, right? That is Netflix. Let's sit and watch for 20 hours, and we will now have had pleasure. We will have avoided pain. And we will have conserved energy. We're just going to sit there. So know that's coming up for you. These are the things that would come up as you're going to try and do this thing. Um, becoming self-confident. Now, this is not confidence like, um, I'm confident. This is developing confidence in yourself. This is going back to what you're saying. You will slowly build that confidence as you continue to move that muscle towards it. But becoming self-confident means or learning to have confidence in yourself to show up in the way you want to show up. So like back to that example of the things in the garage that, you know, you want to get done. It's like, you know, if I tell myself today at three, I'm going to take care of those things and I do it at three, I'm building my self-confidence, my confidence in myself. If I have a meeting with President Nelson around the corner here today at no, guess what? I'm going to be there. I'm going to be cute. I'm going to be fun. I'm going to be spiritual. All the things. So why don't we do that for our own selves? We have to learn that muscle. Like, how do we show up? That is our self-confidence. And you'll be having to learn new things. Learning new things is going to be hard for whatever it is you're doing. Maybe if you're trying to organize something, or I don't know your name, but like being able to declutter, maybe you have to learn something new about that. Like, people doing it? is there a system that I could use is there something that someone else has done that you know, I had to learn new things like how to do the cutters you know and the whatever the things are that I learned I, I actually block it out right um and and that's part of the process okay and then remember your primitive brain so this is what we have it's called the amygdala it's kind of like our caveman brain it is going to come up big time and it's going to say it's a hard thing that you're trying to accomplish or it may be saying no 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 you don't need to do that right now it's going to come up and tell you um don't bother and so i kind of have this little thing when when the brain does that down here at the bottom thank you brain 
opinion is noted. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're trying to keep me safe. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And then you kind of say, go on your merry way. So this primitive brain, it gets large and in charge because it's loud and it gets after us big time. But the prefrontal cortex is our ability to make decisions in advance on purpose for our lives, to live intentionally. So that's what we want to access when we're doing any of these things. When you're creating this thought, that is you being intentional and on purpose. And then that creates that feeling and those actions. So that's where you can rely on the part of you that is really developed. It's not as loud as that primitive brain, which keeps us safe and does its job. But remember, that's going to come up in this. Um, and then knowing you're going to have to choose, fail repeatedly over and over. You know, in my kitchen right now, that little paper I showed you. So because I didn't know, so I had to fail at this. There was like a little ledge right at this one section. So I put two pieces of wood and like a donut head, matched those two pieces of wood up on this tiny little ledge as if that was going to support the wood, which is hilarious. I'm like, why would I have done that? Where I put a whole piece of wood over the top and then this could be an, a seam in a different place. And maybe you're not understanding this, but it was. Cool. And so I have this little kind of groove now that's just sitting there and I'm like, gosh, but. I was willing to fail repeatedly to get the thing done. And now I still kind of love that little bit because it's like, you, did, you still did this. So don't forget to thank your brain. Okay, and then the other thing that comes up is your brain is going to lie to you. So, oh, and she just left, I think, our carb girl. Your brain is going to lie to you. So if you're trying to avoid, let's say, carbs, or you know, you know, I just, I, I'm not going to eat fruits or cake or whatever it is because I really want to change how I feel. Um, then there's that chocolate cake on the counter. And your brain will literally just lie to you that you need it. And then you will like literally believe your brain. It's like, you totally need that because you need the dopamine hit right now. It's so good. It is so good. And you will not be able to live without it. Like it will just, it will pummel you with lies. And then what's fascinating, even when we planned in advance and on purpose, we will act against our own will. So it's like, I'm literally going towards the cake. Like I have no choices anymore. Like that, that's, it's out of my control. I am without choice. So no, all these things are going to come up and try and thwart you as you're trying to take your life in this next, you know, better chapter. Okay, hold on. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything. So you can all go home and up level big time. Okay. Okay. And then there's, so the other part of this is, um, and I, I kind of mentioned this, but one of the emotions you just have to attach to any emotion you're going to feel, which might be those commitment, dedicated, um, whatever it is you're choosing, hopeful. The other emotion that is always going to come along for the ride, and you just have to welcome the wagon, get on, it's uncomfortable. You're going to feel uncomfortable. And when you feel uncomfortable now, that means you will feel comfortable later. So now I can go in my kitchen and I actually can wipe up things. I can get things out. It's comfortable. I was very uncomfortable. So whatever emotion you're picking, add discomfort or uncomfortable to that and just welcome it in. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm going to feel uncomfortable. Oh, that's right. I feel very miserable right now. Yes. Oh, I really do want that chocolate cake. This is highly uncomfortable. So when it comes, just welcome it to your, your town. Um, okay, a couple other little things that may happen to you in this process of whatever, whatever you're doing that you just need to note and remember, you are bigger than these things. And just this literally is all about your ability to choose a thought that will serve you and um, have confidence as you grow that thought. And just remember, it's a lot of, of self-talk. So you may not honor your calendar. Maybe you put something on your calendar. You may not honor it. You might not follow through on a commitment you've made. You might not take action. So there's two things, two actions. There's passive action and massive action. Passive is like, I'm going to a class like this. I'm very passive. I'm entertaining. Possibly. Um, it you're just taking in information. Okay, so that's passive action. Then you're going to go away. Hopefully, take massive action. And that is doing the thing. Whatever the thing is, it's the decluttering. It's the carving. It's the... Whatever the thing is that you're doing, that's the massive thing. Um, you may change your mind because you get in the middle of it and be like, oh, this is too hard or whatever. 
what is this to come up? You might be confused or you might be indecisive. So I always say indecision is like sitting on a fence. It hurts your bum off. It doesn't feel good. So it's making decisions. You, you might play that land of, I don't know. That, is, that never serves us. That thought never serves us. I don't know, but we love it. It works so much. We may give up. We may lower the standard. We may make excuses. And we may justify inaction or watching Netflix for hours at a time. We may do something like spend money to feel better or um, any number of those things. So just kind of know that that may come up. I hope some of this takes you away to another place that gives you some way to up level or awaken yourself. And I think we're kind of at the end of our time. So thank you so much for coming and I'm happy to answer questions and share. <laughs>